any of the topics last time. And so we get to have Aaron back. And uh, as you just heard, Aaron's here. Aaron, go ahead and tell everyone, hey. Hey, everybody. Coming off a huge, huge second split NIS win, which was really cool. Funny thing is I watched it all the way down to the last 30 laps, got busy with the wife, and then uh, came back, and he's, he's he won the race. I can't believe that. <laughs> Doing a Polish, vic Polish victory lap. Just like Kowicki. Love it, love it. Let's just talk about that, Aaron. How cool was that? getting your your first nis victory let's talk about that for a little bit that was really cool um i mean been streaming for a while and and all that but i mean as far as being on iRacing and stuff i mean i've been on iRacing since what 2016 i think something like that and been running nis for at least two full years you know if not you know part of a third and that's the first NIS win, and that's across all the splits. The older splits where we're in lower splits and the higher splits and all that. It's just crazy. It takes so much to go right to win one of those races, I feel like, and it's it's really, really challenging. But those are really, really coveted. Um, a lot of people that we race with, I mean, they'll only have a couple. Some people that take it super serious and they run it four times a week, like uh, Alec had commented. Um you know, he's like, I've got three, three wins. That's it. And running years wow. of, uh, of NIS, you know, running it, you know, four times a week fixed. Man. He's got three, three wins ever. Well, I can tell you right now, I, I've never even come close to running, winning one. And, uh, I, and I'm not saying I'm much better than the splits I'm in, but I'm a little bit better. I think I drive um, better than my I rating shows. And I've never even come close simply because even in the higher splits, it's so hard to survive the dang things <laughs> yeah yeah that's a big part of it and i mean if if you saw the stream and everything uh you know zimmy and i he was like do you think you're gonna lay back or anything like that and i said heck no i said not a richmond like if, if we can qualify up in the top 10 like that's where we're gonna run all race and just try to stay ahead of all the junk yeah and it worked out i felt bad for some of the other guys like ricky and and jeremy and mark they all got caught up that's crazy well I don't know if well, I haven't even posted the YouTube video yet. I need to. Davis and I actually did lay back. We laid back. I mean, we seriously dropped a second or two off the pace, dropped below the yellow, let everyone go, and just hung around the back of the pack and then checked up when we saw anything. And mm -hmm. uh, it worked for 100 laps. And then when we're like, okay, we'll start to move away up the pack, immediately, boom, out of the race, wrecked. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it happens in an instant. I was watching um, Mark's race earlier today, um, where he was—he literally was like, "Man, we've had green flag laps strung together." He's like, "When's somebody gonna lose it?" And literally, thirty seconds later, Man. the one guy high sided it into the wall off of two and just took him out. He had nowhere to go yeah. at all. And that, like, the weird thing is, I—I uh, I haven't run any NAS yet this season. And it's immensely helped my eye rating. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's been crazy. So, yeah, so congratulations on that, man. That's a big deal. As far as all your wins go, where do you think that one rates? Man, that's up there. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, best wins I've ever had, and I think that that's up there. The Daytona win and Daytona 24 win is, is probably up there. Um you know, I think some of the other big, bigger wins. I mean, we've had a lot more recently than than um, in the past. You know, where you know we won the be fixed at Five Flags. Um, yeah. We won the truck race that same week. Um, it's it's been good, but honestly, it's just Didn't been, you get it's been feeling really solid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we won K and N in, at Five Flags. Five Flags is just a great track for me. I really like that track a lot, yeah. and. Uh, you know, it's it's a blast. But in terms of you know best wins that I've had or ones that felt the best to me, that was up there because it was one we had the speed to be up there. It wasn't purely strategy. Two, um, you had great call from Zimmy on, on the on the pit box to try to earlier in the race to see what it would feel like, and that made a huge difference. It was a great strategy call, and then we used strategy to stay out front and. You know, we held it together, and and honestly, Connor Hall cut us a, a major break. Yeah. Um, 
on the last lap. He could have easily just, you know, not, I wouldn't even call it running me over into turn one. He could have easily just given me a bump right out of the way, but he didn't. Yeah. I thought, you know? and this is what always happens, especially last laps for wins. I thought yeah. he was going to send it and put it down on the apron and come back India. That's what it looked like <laughs> in the mirror. And he didn't, you know. Yeah, he uh, could have. I mean, yeah. that's for sure. But, he, I mean, I don't know Connor all that well. Um, I've raced with him a bunch. Um, but, uh, but it was really cool. I don't know if you caught what he was saying um, after the after the race. I, he's like, oh, I couldn't do it to you, and I said, I really appreciate that. And yeah, we did the Polish victory lap, and he's like, it's funny that you're doing that. Um, but uh, oh God, what is it? He was he drives Arca, um, I guess from time to time. I don't know if he's full time, but um, he was saying that uh, I think it's Paul Andrews, mm-hmm. who is Alan Kowicki's well was alan kawicki's crew chief mm-hmm. um, he's actually his crew chief in arca no way oh. you're kidding yeah yeah so we actually got that win did the polish victory lap with him finishing second and we did it in the number seven car too oh i didn't hear him say that. that is amazing holy cow <laughs> yeah that was a really neat moment yeah wow. you're right Trent. it was really cool really really cool all right so <clears throat> am i this is just me and you can correct me if i'm wrong I think um, probably the most uh, probably emotional win from the outside looking in would be the Daytona. I, I think the most impressive win was that one last night, though, um, because yeah. you were running in a much tougher split, and just surviving that race is a miracle in and of itself. And not only did you do that, you were fast, and you held off a charging field at the end to do it with a lot of hungry guys trying to win that race. So my whole opinion, most most impressive win yet for you sir yeah there was something special about it for sure um i think the daytona 24 win is probably i don't know if we're ever going to top that because that was that meant so much just because it was so many people contributing and practicing in in doing all this and doing all that and it's just such a long race to have no major mistakes like that and yeah just have everybody pitch in and have it, you know, just kind of come to fruition at the end. And we held them off there with speed, but we weren't the fastest car at Daytona. The The race kind of came to us and we made some good strategy calls to, to stay out front and, and keep the race winnable. But the NIS race last night, that was one where we qualified up front, we ran inside the top 10 all night, and just had top five speed all night and it just worked out but i wanted an is win forever you know and yeah. they're really really difficult and i think my best finish before that might have been third or maybe second um but uh but definitely not like i could have had that win or you know something like that it was yeah. one of those ones where we didn't have the speed to win it but we got a good really good finish but that was one where i felt like we had a shot to win it once we when when Zimmy decided that we would take two and I decided that we would because we took two tires I think on the last it was either two or three pit stops um when it was sticking like that we started getting the cautions coming I felt like the strategy was going to work yeah um but I knew when Connor got to second I knew that he was going to have a good restart on the outside I knew he was going to do it but it all worked out but that one meant a lot that's that's for it's a definitely a close second to the daytona win for sure yeah yeah, and again how about zimmy man is he gonna be the guy from here on out in nas i mean dude did a silly job last night it's hard to not you know put him on top of the pit box and spot for us that's for sure it's really difficult because i mean i love brandon and i love having him there and he's a lot of fun um but there's something i think brian and i have really good chemistry i think brian's definitely a much more calming voice and he's definitely just a little bit more laid back he reminds me so much he sounds like tj majors on there like <laughs> yep he's on your outside he's still there oh yep. my gosh yep, you're clear drive yes. away <laughs> and from a streamer standpoint i hear zimmy talking and I, i'm like i i need that on my stream too that guy has got such charm in his voice hey everyone say hey to yeah. john who will be here next week by the way short plug john's gonna be on next monday for the full sendai racing podcast gonna be a good one but yeah, yeah, I'll be watching that one. I'll oh, be yeah, watching sure. that. It was funny. I was thinking of John earlier because uh, Brian and I were talking after the race last night. And I was after we did so terribly at Texas. And we were really, literally, you know, the tail of the field. We were terrible. 
And uh, I was really thinking of John because I know John's a big Rusty Wallace fan. And I'm like, kind of like Rusty Wallace, like, okay on the intermediates and whatever and the plate tracks, whatever. And then we get to the short track swing and it's like we're clicking off really good finishes at Bristol and Richmond and Martinsville and, and all that. So I, I thought of John when, uh, when <laughs> and I were talking about that because I know he's a Rusty fan. Yeah, yeah, that'll be an interesting one. So last time Aaron was on, I promised you guys we would give out streaming tips for those of you who want to start streaming on iRacing. It's funny that John comes in. You've got uh, two yeah. just awesome iRacing streamers right here right now. And uh, Aaron, you've been streaming for how long now? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's been, I think, two years. Yeah, Something man. like that, I think. I can go back and I can try and see if I can look up the date on our first video. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, I started on Twitch initially. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just couldn't really get any traction, and uh, eventually went over to uh, YouTube and and just was able to get more views and just a little bit just a little bit more traction. I, I feel like we could probably I could probably take the stream over to Twitch and do really well, but it's just been on YouTube for so long. I would feel bad, you know, trading this, sides. This is my humble opinion now too. Um, actually, I don't know. I don't know what, what's the cut on super chat. Do you get, uh, do you get the full it, cut on that or how does that work? No, 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 you don't get the full cut on that. I believe it depends on, um, your partnership level, I believe. So mm -hmm. I'm a YouTube partner now. Um, you know, cause I've got over a thousand subscribers um, which also gives you super chat and everything, but I think there's different tiers to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can do memberships just the same as you guys do on, on the Twitch side. Um, I don't have that activated yet. Um, I just have chose not to do that. Um, but, um, but yeah, you don't get, I think you get about half really. Uh, it honestly, in, in all the donations and everything, I don't want to it discourage people from donating, but I've not cashed out any donations. I've just let it sit there. You know, I figure eventually I'll find a good use for it and, uh, you know, maybe I'll pay it back to you, pay it back <laughs> to people. But it's kind of funny when people like my dad donate, it's like, you can just pay me, you know, that'd be, <laughs> be a better use of the money. <laughs> okay. So that's good to know folks. And that's, that's something you need to know when making a decision between, um, Twitch and YouTube, there are different tiers and there are different, uh, payouts. And first of all, th yeah. Nathan, thank you so much for that subscription. Five months. Thank you so much. My, my that's BC huge. mate there. That is huge. Um, but in Twitch, the way it works is, um, you become a, what do they call it? They call it a, an affiliate at 50 followers. And that's actually not much at all. And actually, um, there are many people in a five one who made it way quicker than I did. Uh, but the mm -hmm. thing is though, everything you get, you get like, let me think. So the way bits work, I don't remember how it is, but you get about like 59% of that because people pay, pay for bits and it's one cent per bit for a streamer but it's like i can't remember what the division is but it's you get a lot less however if somebody donates to me i get almost 100 percent of that it's like a like a 10 cent transfer fee through Streamlabs or something like that so it's it's really yeah, oh yeah through the, through the stream lab donation yeah it's yeah. and and that's something that's crazy and that's one thing i really don't like about the youtube side i feel like well first of all i the YouTube application and the chat and everything, I feel like runs much better and cleaner, especially on mobile devices on yes. the YouTube side than the Twitch side. The Twitch side is really finicky. Um, even specifically like on my phone, when I watch your streams live from my phone, they're really choppy and it's not you. It's, it's something with the app and I've, it's that way across most of the devices I have. But yeah, there's a reason for that too. I actually know the reason, but keep going. Yeah, and and a lot of it is I know that some people lock in at different resolutions and stuff, and I mm -hmm. think that there's part of that that goes along with being an affiliate and being able to change that. But on the YouTube side, it's just you have to have so much more backing before they're willing to start paying you. And a lot of that yep. was my choice by I didn't monetize anything. I, I could have monetized a long, long time ago and had ads playing and everything, but... I just felt like, you know, if I've got like 
you know, 200 subscribers, whatever. Why am I forcing these 200 people who like my stuff to watch an ad before anything? <laughs> like, so you it's not worth it. Video. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's not worth the change, you know. But, mm. you know, once we hit a thousand subscribers and everything, you know, I felt like, you know, we're doing this full time. You know, we probably ought to monetize it. And we've got super chat and everything. But, yeah. but still, I leave some of that stuff open more just on a personal basis. You know, I've looked at other avenues. Um, there's another YouTube channel I follow that doesn't have memberships per se, but he has a Patreon account, uh, which I believe you get a much better cut of. Oh yeah. Um, and basically he uploads special things to Patreon and it's only a dollar a month, you know, per Patreon. I feel like you just, you could do a lot better, like yeah. doing that instead. So I honestly, I think I may do that instead of doing YouTube memberships per se. And I think that just might be a better, a better thing, but I think we're getting off topic as far as tips for streaming. Yeah, um, yeah. Streamlabs is free, Scotty, just so you know anyone. Uh, Aaron, yeah. would you recommend Streamlabs? I swapped over to Streamlabs. Um, once once I had Super Chat and everything, I really needed to have that for, you know, playing the, the GIFs and the sound bites to really kind of bring people in. But I think OBS Classic and OBS Studio, they run much lighter than Streamlabs. Streamlabs uses, like, twice as much memory so that's a big big factor and before i got the nicer computer couldn't do it it just there's no way my computers didn't have the horsepower to run iRacing yeah. and Streamlabs and do all the rendering and everything it just wasn't it wasn't uh it just wasn't conducive and i didn't need to do it so um but now i've got that but as far as tips for streaming uh if i had one tip i mean it would be you know, you really need to use that private streaming button, whether it's on Twitch for your test streams or on uh, the YouTube side, to really dial in, you know, all your kind of parameters for like your bandwidth, you know, your base mm -hmm. canvas and those things to really get everything right. Because the yeah. last thing you want to do, especially if you're just starting out, is making a bad impression. There, no one's going to come yep. back to your channel. A second time if they look and it's like you know half the screens cut off or you know the screens just black or they can't hear anything no one's gonna see your name or see your channel and click it a second time correct yeah I know I won't I only watch stream again if it's all choppy and stuff that's true yeah yeah that's you got one chance to make a, a first impression on people and the other thing too is for streaming for for me is a lot of it is you just you almost have to keep talking <laughs> and john's really good at it oh, yeah. um i run out of things to talk about um there are definitely things that other streamers do that i don't do that i just don't see the value in but they definitely bring in viewers like face cam and all that i, I could do it i just i don't it doesn't only really scumbags add anything. have face cams <laughs> the only scumbags have face cams green screens <laughs> And overlays and all that other stuff. Gosh. So I I would say honestly though for for streaming if you're just starting out and everything I mean do a couple practice streams you know stream them privately so you can watch them back yourself mm -hmm. and just see what kind of product you're putting out there and also just make sure you're you're putting out a product that you would want to watch or that you're bringing something to the table. For me it was there were so many people that were doing iRacing and streaming it and I found it interesting, but no one was talking about what that is. So what's the NIS? How does that work? You know, what kind of technique are they using to get around here or what kind of tips or tricks can you do to, to, to get around faster or anything like that? People were just like, yeah, that guy almost wrecked me. You know, that that's really all they were saying. It was just more of a drama show than it was <laughs> anything like educational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You tried to wreck me. <laughs> that's awesome. No, nah, but well, I mean tips for streamers is just yeah, try it out, but I mean do it and review your own stuff. I mean, that's another good tip. You have to yes. watch some of your stuff back. You know, there was for a period there there was a couple of streams that I did in a row that were like it was terrible. Like you looked at it and you're like, there's something wrong and something had changed in OBS when it ran an update and it like the bit rate was awful. I yeah. had to take those videos down. Yeah. Sometimes it's painful watching those things back. Like, man, I look like an idiot. <laughs> you yeah. know? 
Yeah, yeah, believe me. Or for me, it's more like, Aaron, why don't you calm down? Like, it was an accident. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about that in a little bit, Aaron. So, hey, here's here's my streaming advice to you guys. Um, Aaron, you might remember this. Um, when I first started streaming, I got to affiliate. I was so ecstatic. And um, actually, my last 10 came from John Theodore sharing my thing in his Twitch stream, which is really nice. Thank you for that, John. And we try to share others now, too. We do it at the end of every single stream, and it started with you, John, so appreciate that. But um, <laughs> so my, my advice to you is this. Um, at first, you are not going to have much of an audience at all. And you just have to suck it up and push through it and look at that big old goose egg for a while and find ways to promote it and, and stick with it. But I remember when I first got that affiliate, I posted in our Discord, and <laughs> I remember someone said, oh, that's no big deal. I could probably do that in a week. And he created a Twitch channel, and he had like five streams. He didn't get a single follower, and he quit. I was like, <laughs> I remember I went and followed him, and he wasn't streaming. I was like, dude, why'd you quit streaming? I was like, yeah, I didn't feel like it anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, the streaming thing, it's it has a novelty to it, but eventually – you get to a point where if you have followers and you have, especially in your shoes, and I don't have this, which is part of the reason I, I don't do the memberships. If people are memberships, they have memberships and they're subscribed to you, they're paying you every month, whether you put out product yes. or not. Exactly. And if you're not putting out product, it's a good way to get people to leave. So that's a choice that I made that it's like, I don't want, cause I don't know. I can't, set a schedule and say i'm streaming every night at 8 p.m yeah there, there are gonna be weeks where it's just my main job and life just gets in the way and i can't stream as much as i might want to um but there's gonna be other weeks where it's like yeah we can stream almost every night you know but it's it those those early days are really really tough and i can attest to that and that's why i oh. left twitch it's just one i couldn't get the 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 streaming right YouTube was just a little bit easier um, to just get a stream. And it felt like I got more viewers on YouTube just casually than yeah. on Twitch. But I think the environment's much, much different today totally. than it was three years ago, you know, or two years ago. So my first YouTube stream that I did um, directly to YouTube was January 13th, 2017. How do you remember that? <laughs> Because I looked it up. Oh, okay. I got you. I, I pulled up the videos. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so I went all the way back and looked at it. But that was the K&N car at Bristol. And that is that video has five thumbs up on it. And the video, everybody goes back and watches your first video. Oh, yeah. But like the second, like your second video, nobody cares. It doesn't nobody have a novelty. Cares. So my yeah. second video has like 40 views. That's it. Let's it's got see. no comments. It's got one thumb up. That's it. <laughs> That's interesting. Like I said, Zimmy, thank you so much for the 100 bits. I appreciate that. And you missed it, but we did talk about you um, quite a bit. And we did attribute you a lot of praise here. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you go back to my older videos. Well, my first one's got 53. My second one's got 57. But my third one, holy cow, it's got 24. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's no yeah. rhyme or reason. Like, believe me, there are some yeah. videos you post that for whatever reason just catch, and there's no explanation for it. You know, and that's Absolutely. the cool thing is I remember, you know, when I was first streaming, it's like, man, it's got, you know, 20 views. That's cool. You know, and then the first yeah. video that broke 100, I'm like, whoa, that's awesome. You know, but it's now, you know, you're like last night we had it was about 50 people or well, it was more than that oh, at yeah, the end of the, uh, the NIS race, just watching right then and there. Yeah. And that's really cool. But, you know, another big tip for streamers is you have to put up content regularly especially yes. on the youtube side they reward you hugely for uploading every day if you don't upload every day um it, you can tell like you can just look at the algorithm and just yes. see it and yeah. just see your analytics and just and all that and just take a look at that too it's really important yeah what aaron is talking about guys there's a there's a system in youtube and um it seems to favor people who post often he's not just talking about posting a lot for the people that watch you he's saying there's physically a system that will put you to the front more if you post more regularly. And I know yep. that's true because I've seen my oh, yeah. analytics where I've posted more than four videos a week. Most of my viewers come from the browsing section and not from my subscribers. So, yeah, absolutely true. 
Yeah, absolutely. And if you can post daily, you can see that subscribed, non-subscribed, absolutely flip. You know, so I haven't streamed a ton like on the regular as of like probably the last month or so where we'll stream the highlight stuff. So the NIS, the short track championship, and then maybe like one other thing. So we're only streaming like three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. And that, like, I think right now subscribed views for me, I think it was like 60 some odd percent are, are subscribed and only like 30 some odd percent are unsubscribed. Before that, there was a time where I was literally, I went two weeks and streamed every day. And at that end of that month, it was the other way around. Non-subscribed people was 60%. Yeah, exactly. Subscribed people were 40. And that's really what the the algorithm picks up on. Yes. You know, and it's, if, if people who aren't subscribed are watching, it's going to keep suggesting you to those people. Yeah. Thomas said it's an excellent question. I'll make sure to ask Aaron that at the end of the stream, so... Stay with oh, us. God. We're going to answer that question. Oh, That's an excellent question, yes. It is an excellent question. Yeah, I can't wait to hear this. Okay, Aaron, so one thing I wanted to talk about was a little bit about Road to Pro. And especially <laughs> after that win last night, oh my goodness. So ha have you ever run a Road to Pro race, or do you have any plans for that in the future? I have, I have never run a Road to Pro race. I have thought about it. There were plans to do it this coming season – a long time ago, but Lou was trying to get me to do it and mm -hmm. was trying to get me to potentially, you know, go on with Beast or go on with one of the other teams or something like that. Um, but really what it came down to was I just, I don't have the regular time to dedicate to open setup building mm -hmm. and participating in a team like that the way that someone who is on a team should. And when you and I talked about, you know, you joining Beast and everything like that, it's the same thing. I'd love to do it, and it's a really good opportunity, but I just can't dedicate that level of time to it and still keep people interested in doing other stuff. You know, where we'll yeah. run K&Ns, or we'll run the late models, or the super late models, or or VRS, you know, trying to do some more road stuff. You just don't have time, Yeah. you know, and I'd love to do it. Um, I've never run a road or pro race, but the other concern I had was, at that point in time, I think my I rating was only... It was only about 4,000. And uh, Aaron, you have to remind me, what were we talking about right there? We were talking about... Um... We were talking about Road to Pro. That's right. And you, you I, the last thing I heard is that um, you just didn't have the time to commit to it because you wanted to run multiple things. And being a yeah. swimmer, I can definitely understand that. Yeah, and that's a big part of it. But the other part of it, too, was I can't remember how many pro licenses are held over from the top finishers in the Peak Series you know, every year. So I think there's like, what, 40 or 50 pro licenses or something like that? And, yes, somewhere in there. You know, yeah, and, and of that, I think, what is it, the top 15 or 20? 20. Get held over to the top 20, keep their pro license, and everybody below that, their license is, you know, at risk, if you will. Mm -hmm. But exactly. you better be finishing and running the top split every week in Road to Pro. Otherwise, you're, just, you're not going to make up enough points. Even if you won second split every single week i don't think you'd have enough points i think you're going to get beat out by the guys who finish top 20 in split one yeah and so I, my i rating just wasn't high enough to do that it was exactly like 4k at the time well if we did the math on it and um because guys like um nathan jurgensen and chris carroll are running it and uh his first week chris got i think a p7 and in the third split and if this the points averages were the same throughout the entire year as it was last year. He would have squeaked into 20th. Hey, hey guys, sorry we lost power. So the, you really need a high I rating to do it, and that's one thing that's going to be my goal is i got to get my I rating way higher. And so that means running in races that I know are clean where I'm not going to get wrecked out and then running right around where I should be. So that's what they got me doing right now so I can try to run yeah. it next year. Yeah, you got to run the uh, the Lualeski diet of uh, lots of legends, lots of street stocks, lots of open set stuff. That's just lower level. You just drive away and qualify on the pole. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I've been running a lot of C open, and it has been – you never think – I mean, you're, you're so used to being wrecked in the trucks, you're amazed when it goes. Like, at Bristol, we went 120 laps green at Bristol <laughs> in the trucks. It's like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> yes. And hot tip, by the way. The low line does save tires still. There you go. Nice oh, thing. yeah. A little tidbit oh, yeah. of information. So, all right, Aaron, let's get into something you're a little bit passionate about here. 
let's go ahead and talk about uh, 90s NASCAR races. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. I want to hear your top three all-time favorite 90s NASCAR races. Thank you, Scotty, oh, for the 500 bits, yeah, by the way. Scotty with the bits. Man. Thank you, um, man. I just man. appreciate that so much. And while you think about that, I just want to thank these guys real quick. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I appreciate it a lot. This microphone and this chair that I'm going to have tomorrow, it's because you guys have donated this stream, and I just appreciate it so much. So thank you. But I know, on. man. It's about time you got a nice chair. I've been looking at that chair in the background of your stream, and I'm like, <laughs> did you send away like off the back of like a cereal box to get that okay. chair? Do you want to know? You want, do you want to know a little secret, Aaron? That, <laughs> oh, that, that yeah. chair behind me. That's actually not my real chair. That's a that's a chair that I. That's a fake chair. <laughs> yeah, that's a fake chair. My chair is worse than that. <laughs> no, I've seen the I've seen a picture of your chair in the Discord, man. That thing looks <laughs> like it got dug out of a dumpster or something. Didn't it have a wheel break off? Uh, okay. So I took all the wheels off because it was uh, like with this break. Well, you know how it is. It'll yeah. you'll push yourself back. So. Yes. So I took them all off. Yeah. It's a it's a twenty dollar Walmart chair, oh and I bought it not knowing I was going to be streaming or anything. And you know, Justin, yeah. I'd be in a. I, I understand. I understand. But I'm telling you, it honestly secret thing about Aaron. Aaron loves thrift store shopping. That's a it was a major source of income for me before we actually got the record store. I would go out and hunt hunt thrift stores like two or three a day. And just try to find stuff that I could flip and just make a little bit extra money on. But man, you can find some cool office chairs. It'll be nice for you. But the man, I don't know. As far as favorite races, I mean, I'd say I can't really rank them. Um, okay. The the ninety two season finale at Atlanta that has to be probably number one. It was oh, a crazy mean. dramatic, crazy dramatic race. Um, I was actually there as a kid. Um, That's right. so I was there. Yeah, I was there at that race. Richard, Richard Petty's last race, Jeff Gordon's first cup race. Um, wasn't Jeff Al- Bodine in contention for that too? Uh, what for the championship? Yeah. Who was in contention that wrecked? It was Davey. It was Davey. Oh, that's right. Jeff Bodine. Davey <laughs> Allen. And, yeah. <laughs> Davey, Davey Allen and, um, and Bill Elliott. That's and right. I believe there was somebody else who could have won it as well. I can't remember who it was though, but the points were crazy tight but it really it just came down to alan kawicki staying out and leading an extra lap that's really all it was you know but that was a crazy race and if you haven't seen that you need to find it and watch that race and just understand i can't i can't believe you were there and just watch it develop yeah yeah i was there that yeah. is so insane yeah you, you told me that once and i didn't believe him <laughs> yeah yeah it was really cool but uh again as a kid i didn't really exactly know what happened i didn't really know who won yeah um, yeah. cause the points were really that tight, but that's in there. Um, you know, I'm a huge Mark Martin fan, but I think, wait, can I guess the next one? Go for it. Is it the 1993 race at Michigan where he got put to the back and just completely dominated the race? Yeah. You know, he didn't even win the race. That, oh, <laughs> that's that's crazy. he didn't. Yeah. He dominated the whole thing though. Oh, it was the fastest like car there all day, but yeah. it was incredible. If, and again, if you haven't seen that race, that's another. When well, you talk about cars that were just on rails and had the setup dialed and just ruined the race for everybody. It's actually really one. exciting, though. Yeah, to watch him drive through the pack and run three wide at Michigan, you know, with those cars and everything. That's a lot of fun. I don't know if that would be in like my top races of the 90s. It was a lot of fun to watch, and I'm biased, but I think. Probably one that is my favorite. I think it was 1998. It was the Winston in 98. And um, Jeff Gordon had, I believe it was the Chrome Illusion scheme. It was like Ooh. that Chroma color scheme. Yeah, I remember that. It was like the chameleon paint. Mm-hmm. Um, the actual name of that is Chrome Illusion, the DuPont stuff. But um, he broke on the last lap, and Mark Martin passed him in that Eagle one scheme that I used to run in the NIS. So it was a, uh, that was a really cool. Um, I remember watching that happen live and just being blown away, but um, yeah, I'd say that's up there. And Zimmy talked about, um, I don't know if it wasn't one race, but um, you know, a series of races where Harry Gant won, you know, four in a row. Um, 
in uh in Maybe september not. yep yeah I, again i don't know if harry would get there we we've talked about this at length but love him but I, there's just there's other people that have done more for the sport oh of course we'll talk about that a little bit later and going back to that mark martin race at michigan and the one thing that made that race if you're watching it live i'm sure it's horrible but it was yeah, like yeah. the fact that the cameras kept going back to him because he was so dominant. And I remember at one point, Mark sent in three wide going into the three. And Ned Jarrett in the beginning is, oh, Mark, you're not going to want to do that. And Mark, <laughs> by the time they come out of the corner, Mark's already two car lengths ahead of the other guys he was going in against. So, yeah. It, it was just a great yeah. race. So, definitely yeah, that was that one out. just, it, that was one where you could just tell there was a car that was just hooked up. They had it dialed in. They were yeah. the fastest car in all those practices. And that was this, I believe that was the same week that he finally had had enough of Dale Earnhardt and wrecked, they wrecked each other in practice. Um, there's a whole nother thing leading up to that. And I believe they briefly touch on it in the race coverage. But anytime you watch those, if you can find the raw satellite feeds, they talk a lot about other things outside of the broadcast coverage, which is really cool. Um, you know, especially that 92, uh, finale if you can find the satellite feed of it hearing benny and ned and, and bob jenkins talking off the air like man this is really close and hearing them just really be really candid it's it's really interesting that's my favorite crew of all time by the way yeah i agree with that a thousand percent you know second to i really liked you know bestwick and benny and wally dollenbeck i loved wally dollenbeck Wally's up in cool. the booth i thought yeah. he was always i always thought he was really funny <laughs> such yeah. a goofball all right, so we got your 90s races out there. Let's talk about this. Are there any guys, we were just talking a little bit about Handsome Harry, hashtag Harry in the Hall. Are there any guys that are not in the Hall of Fame that you think should be? You know, to be honest with you, there's not very many people in the Hall of Fame yet. You yeah. know, so there's so many gaps, and there's that's kind of the thing when you first start one of these. That's There's so many people that really deserve to be in the Hall Mm-hmm. You know, and they have their place, but it, the other thing as well is you look at other sports where you've got um, like the football Hall of Fame or the baseball Hall of Fame where it's like, okay, you've got, you know, 30 some odd teams and each one of these teams has, you know, nine, you know, full time stars that are on the field, mm-hmm. you know, and in the NASCAR world, you've got nowadays 30 cars on the track including the people who bring up the back so i mean you might have 10 stars you know who might compete across you know on average six seven years of their career it's just the pool is so much smaller for them to throw four people in the hall every year um it's just there's a lot there yeah exactly so yeah, rylan's, I... rylan's right I, I don't understand how jeff gordon wasn't unanimously voted Whoa, uh, he wasn't unanimous? I don't think it was unanimous. Well, you had votes, you know, and some people said, you know, he's going to get in anyway, so they don't give him a vote. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Just so the I'm... same as, like, so, like, for the All-Star race, like, why would you bother casting a vote for, you know, Chase Elliott? You know he's going to get in regardless if he's not already in the, the All-Star race. He's going to get in on the fan vote anyway. You know? Yeah, exactly. Wait, it, it, I'm looking at a list here, and I don't, I don't think this can be right. It's saying that Mark Martin is not in the Hall? Is that true? He is in the Hall of Fame. Okay, so this must be old then. When was he inducted? Um, Two years ago. Okay, not this, so this past year, but I think the year before. So this is an old list. And Well, I know one guy that's not in that, that might shock you is Mr. Bobby Labonte. What do you think? Should he be in the Hall? Not in the, not in the Hall. Um... I would say probably not in the hall. Um, mainly just because he had a very short span of when he was highly competitive. Um, you know, kind of that, the really kind of the genesis of, um, not really the genesis, but really when Joe Gibbs really started being competitive week in, week out, and they were just, they were a force. Yeah. But Good point. those, those were cool. Um, you know, just Bobby Labonte. Part of it is Bobby's got the, personality of like a bowl of granola i mean it's just there's nothing <laughs> funny about him there's nothing interesting about him other than the fact that he's bobby labani well hey hold on a second compare right, so... that to terry who's the same exact guy but he's just cooler hey hey you know? what about handsome harry 
Mr. Hollywood yeah. face, Mr. Burt Reynolds, huh? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> Harry did far more for the sport than Bobby Labonte ever did, you know, in terms of running Bush week in and week out, you oh, know, in, in the six like cylinder cars okay. and running local tracks, you know, on Friday nights leading into uh, to race weekends and stuff compared to Bobby Labonte, who just showed up to his press conferences was like, yep, car in really good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so Aaron, you are okay. So, I kind of like your mindset here. If there is right, going right. to be a hall, this better be the like elites. Like, if you're really good, you're not getting in. I'm, I I kind of like that mindset actually, because if you have even high level but not top tier drivers getting in, it kind of, you know, it's kind of a blemish on the other drivers. Is that kind of your mindset there? For if there is going to be a hall of fame, they better be like elite. Well, I mean, it's like you don't want people that are there that it's like imagine when you walk through have you ever been to like the baseball hall of fame oh yeah well never yeah, been to, oh, excuse me sorry okay well same idea i mean you yeah. go to the baseball hall of fame and you look at some of these names and you're like i don't recognize this guy's name at all yes exactly and like well it's like okay well he won the cy young award three times in his 20-year career it's like oh, okay must have been a thin year on nominations i guess because it's like <laughs> you know and we're just not there yet. There's so many people yeah. that can get in. You know, you think of some of the most you know, influential crew chiefs or car builders or people that made major innovations, um, you know, car owners, you know, that just were there week in and week out yeah. um, through decades, you know, stuff that, you know, people may not remember, but NASCAR wouldn't be anything without them just for the people they gave rides to. Mm-hmm. Who became stars, you know, like J.D. Stacy and, um, you know, the Stavola brothers and, you know, those 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 people deserve a place in the Hall of Fame long before somebody who's got one championship who was competitive for many years. Yeah. So here's you a question know? then. So do you think uh, only cup achievements should count towards NASCAR Hall of Fame or no? No, it's NASCAR sanctioned series, and that's the other thing as well. You got to remember, as NASCAR goes, there are so many NASCAR series that run. Um, right. You know, the modified series, the weekly modified series, the things like that. That there are people that are absolute legends. You know, in those yeah. series that just they dominate. They never took the next step because they didn't want to, or maybe they just weren't necessarily yeah. successful. But you know, those people deserve a place. You okay. know, um, but like in there, would the you people, put them in their own section or would you put them amongst the cup drivers? Um, well, I mean, you got to look at it. It's like, it's the NASCAR hall of fame, you know, it's all of NASCAR's arms, branches and all that, you know, I mean, the, it, for people to be a NASCAR hall of fame, um, they have to have had a major influence in NASCAR itself. That's you know, true. there's That's people true. that are going to get in there. I don't know if he's in there or not, but like Humpy Wheeler, uh, <laughs> he, he ought to be in there if yeah. he's not. You know, honestly, I don't know all the people who are in. He's there, on this list of people who are not in. Um, he ought to be in. I mean, yeah. think of all the stuff. I mean, putting lights at Charlotte. Yeah. You know. Oh, I mean, good point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One the hot wind night in itself. Yeah. I mean, running that under the lights and in well, and all the other different promotional things he did to just put on a good show and stuff. And I was thinking about that. Could you imagine a guy like Ron Hornaday not going to the Hall of Fame? You know, after yeah, all he did yeah. for the trucks. Yeah, exactly. And somebody who was competitive for just decades, you yeah. know, um, sometimes I like those people. Sometimes I don't necessarily like them like Johnny Sauter. I'm not a big Johnny Sauter fan, but he's basically Ron Hornaday 2.0. If you yeah. think about it. Yeah, I got booze from his ride recently for Mr. I racing, Brett Moffitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it, there's a, there's a place for it, you know, and, yeah. It's tough. I mean, there's plenty of people that you don't want to snub. Mm-hmm. You know, like you brought up Bobby Labonte. Yeah. It's, you, you think of late 90s, you know, forces in the sport. He's definitely there. You know, um, he's definitely in the conversation. But it, again, I go back to other halls of fames and things where you, especially like Major League Baseball, you hear some of these names. And you're like, man, he didn't get in. Like, unbelievable. Yeah. You know, like John Smoltz or somebody like that, where it's like, yeah, he the went to brave, high school right down the, the road for me. Oh, really? Yep. So, again, like somebody like that, when I don't think he got in, I think Tom Glavin got in from the from the Braves team to the 90s, but 
man, he'd be, they'd be nowhere without him. Yeah. You know, those half those games wouldn't have been won. And he, you Where's know, the... somebody like that, he was a closer, he was a starter, he was a reliever. I mean, it's a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. But I, And I'm kind of new to the whole NASCAR Hall of Fame thing, but uh, the whole Smoltzy thing was about, well, does he belong in the first ballot category? Yeah, first ballot Hall of Fame. Like the, I hate that discussion, you mm-hmm. know. And do you think well, maybe that like, had something to do with Jeff Gordon not getting unanimously in? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you could say no to Gordon. <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, the guy's <laughs> a legend. He came in the sport. He had one year. Where he got his feet wet, and then really the avalanche started. I mean, yeah. he ran for what twenty twenty plus years. All right. I mean, give give the guy some respect. Yeah, we're gonna transition over and hear some more personal stuff with Aaron. Get ready. Here they come. <clears throat> but hey, do you have a favorite Na- just random question? Do you have a favorite NASCAR documentary that you just love and you watch? Uh, there's one I watch every two weeks. It seems like, and I I love it. I don't know why. Talladega Nights. Ta- that, that you know, per- that is a <laughs> documentary. That's right. That's what I asked for. <laughs> Loosely based on on Randy's life. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you watch my streams, yeah, I wreck as much as Ricky Bobby. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to laugh. Ricky was in the uh, in the <laughs> in the chat. He's like, "What if maybe next week I win?" <laughs> I was thinking that was really funny. But, Ricky uh, cracks yeah. me up. I know funny. he does. He does. Ricky's but awesome. the one, in terms of like documentaries and stuff, I don't really know. A lot of the YouTubers that have do- uploaded a lot of things. Uh, I know you you talked about a couple of them, like the toughest speed weeks. They're so um, good. You know, and that guy does a really good job on his channel and I'm I'm blanking on his name right now. I can't. Um, it's it's just a regular guy's name though. That's the thing. It's not like it's a <laughs> it's NASCAR something, but it, yeah. but yeah, he did that one. He did it one on Davey Allison, you know, you know something about I can't remember the title of it. Something about being tough where yeah. he had that horrible Pocono wreck where basically he about had his eyeballs thrown out of his head, you know. Did and you know? Is it there next for that? week? Say that again. Did you know Zimmy was there in the infield care center for that? For the Davy wreck at Pocono, he wasn't. Oh, he not was the Pocono. I'm sorry. He was there I'm for sorry. Talladega. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a whole other discussion. I don't know what Zimmy can and cannot talk about that. He will be talking about it on here eventually. He needs to. He's yeah, got I mean, some crazy stories. He was, he's telling me some more stories before the race last night, man. He's got crazy <sighs> stories. You really got to get him on. I know. It's going to be a thrill. Down. Down. This is stuff people need and want to hear. And he's yeah. got to follow laws and everything, but there's some stuff he said he can share. Sure, so, sure, sure. So that's Definitely. Cool. But in terms of documentaries, I think a lot of those do really well. There was another one on Tim Richmond that the same guy did. Um, yeah. You know, and, and talking about the whole, you know. Another guy not in the hall. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it's debatable. I mean, he had – Again, do you give it to somebody like that where it's like his name is synonymous and people say so much great stuff about him, you know, but in reality, he only had like one or two really good years. That was it. Then he was gone. That's crazy, you know? isn't it? But I guess you could say the same thing with Davey, you know? I mean, he had a couple really good years, but... Kenny Irwin? Yeah, Kenny Irwin, I would not put on that same pedestal. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, would, I mean... <laughs> hey, here's the. I mean, the similarity is that he's dead. I mean, I'm not yeah. trying to be harsh or anything, but, but yeah, I, I mean, he was gonna be better. Something. better. He could have been. Mm-hmm. He could have been. You mm-hmm. know, but there's plenty of people that showed so much promise in the lower series, Ooh. and they just never. Ryland asked a very juicy question. Yeah. Hang on to that, Ryan. We're gonna ask. We're gonna ask Aaron that at the end. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait to hear what you have to say about that, Aaron. Okay, so let's switch over to personal, Aaron. You guys, yeah. it's it's always so sad, Aaron. You probably don't see this, but people are always asking you questions in chat that you can't ever see because you're racing. Yeah, yeah, so, they do. I, I do feel bad about that, yeah. Not your fault. I, I completely get that. The reason why I wreck so much is because I do look at that stuff. <laughs> 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 so, anywho, hey, so let's talk about, um, obviously, Aaron, you work a full-time job, but you also own a record store. How in the world did you get into that? It's a really complicated long story but yeah the long and the short of it is i became friends with the guy who owned this record store um and the long and the short of it is that his it was just him who owned it and ran it operated it and he taught me a lot in terms of you know just 
record collecting and you know what you're looking for and a lot of that stuff you can't just read up on it and study it and just read a book or watch a youtube video and say i know how to do this it's like it so much of it is just experience and seeing things and having someone pass that knowledge to you which is what's really cool about that whole kind of industry people ask a lot of questions that they think there's a simple answer for and there's just not but you know it, at the end of the day he ran it himself um his mom um took a fall and his dad was just getting really sick and mm. he just had to make that call to just spend time with his family yeah. and help them out and he was gonna have to close the store and i didn't want to see that happen and um you know i begged him not to and basically he said it's a done deal i gotta do it and I said, well, hold the phone. I said, what if maybe, you know, we bought the store because Anna wasn't working uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a that's a great move for your marriage. You know, stick your wife, who's not <laughs> the biggest record fan, in a record store and say, hey, you run it. You know, even though it's my baby, right? It's just yeah. that was that was a a big a big struggle. And and honestly, Anna's God bless Anna. Anna's, yeah, Anna's amazing in so many ways. Um, she's so supportive in, in everything that I do, whether it's the streaming or the record store, she's so adaptable and um, she's just, she's just something else. I, I, Zimmy had said before, cause you know, Zimmy's seen, uh, pictures of her and everything. He's like, you definitely outkicked your coverage on that one. I said, yeah, you're damn right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I definitely out married up too. Out of your league. Definitely outkicked your coverage on that one. <laughs> that is yeah, awesome. So that's, so that's how we bought the record store. We yeah. we bought it to keep it from closing, and you'll never we'll never do enough business out of there to to make it a, a full time career. You'll just mm -hmm. you know it's a used record store at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. But it's it's a good side job, and you meet a lot of cool people and have a lot of good interactions with people, and it's yeah. it's cool, you know. And you get to a lot of it is meeting the people who are buying records and meeting people who are selling records and getting their, getting their stories and everything. It's, it's just cool. That is awesome. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We, you asked this of Mark when Mark was on here. And, uh, so this is an even better question for you because you work full-time job, you run a record store with your wife and you do the eye racing thing. How in the world do you find the balance between all that stuff to keep, to keep Miss Anna happy? Well, uh, there's always something that has has to give and for me it's sleep you know i oh. i wish i could run on as much sleep as i used to and unfortunately i just can't the way i used to i used to be able to stay up till you know two three in the morning you know crash and be up at six thirty and ready and ready to go and do it again and now i just i can't do it i i can't run on that level of sleep anymore mm -hmm. i need more than that and that's something that's just a struggle you you know so like for example i came home today and was finishing some work on my laptop and then you know ran out and grabbed you know dinner for for me and anna and came back and was like oh we gotta do tax it's, it's today's tax day it's like oh god oh no I forgot about that so it's like <laughs> all right now i gotta do taxes and then you know you called me i'm like give me give me a little bit and i'll call <laughs> you right back and do that so once i'm done taxi. with this run back to do taxes and then finish up a little bit of work for the main job on my laptop and probably climb into bed at about 1 30. oh gosh then, oh man we do could it all again tomorrow <laughs> oh, so you just, you just run out of time and it's there and this is another good tip for streamers you cannot unless you don't have significant others or friends or wife or girlfriend you cannot prioritize streaming over your own sanity in your own life. Exactly. You know, it's it is so much more than that. And honestly, if people really like your stuff, they'll show up, you know, I mean, yeah. that's kind of, luckily I have that, you know, and the community is really supportive and they don't get mad if I'm not streaming every night or anything like that, but I feel indebted to them to do it as much as I can. Yeah. But you, there are times where you, you have to pull that ripcord and say, all right, I wanted to stream tonight, but you have to be able to step out of of kind of that mindset and say, you know what, I need to focus on, you know, family, or I need to focus on this, or I need to get this done at home, yeah. or, you know, whatever. You just, you, yeah. there's only so much time in the day, 
you know, and you have to understand that and you can't let other things suffer for it. And what people don't see, and even for you, Aaron, you just stream and then you leave your videos up on YouTube. He's yeah. still got to go through the replay, uh, take a mm-hmm. take a high quality screenshot. That doesn't that takes a lot of time, actually. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing that sucks is I used to be able to just do that, and now I can't with VR. I have to unload out of oh, VR, gosh. and then save the replay, then load the replay, and then go back in the race to find where I want to get a good screenshot, get the angle on it, yeah, snap it. Condition the photo, so adjust your brightness, sharp, and all that other stuff. Yep. And then throw it into another program to actually put the text on it and do all that. So, I mean, it's yeah. another ordeal. But what, it's it still yeah. beats editing video, I'll tell you that. And that's what I don't understand, how Mark has time to to edit videos together and render and do all that stuff. I mean, I can't. I don't know how he has time to do that. Now. Well, the funny thing is, then we'll get on to the questions here. <laughs> I've started editing my own videos just to put my own intro on. And let me tell you, it's not worth it. It is yeah. so not worth it. So I think I I'm going to just cut it out and just do the thumbnails and call it good. Well, you can you can insert it into uh, to Streamlabs. You can just play it as a clip before you're, good. when you start streaming, just play that. You were, so... all right, Aaron. Yeah, Thank... there you go. Thanks for making me feel stupid live on uh, Twitch stream here. <laughs> stream tips. <laughs> All right, let's get to these questions here so Aaron can go do his taxes <laughs> and keep his keep his business. All right. <laughs> keep all, keep, yeah, keep the IRS off my tail. All right. Now, Thomas asked the question earlier, VR, uh, what was adjusting to that like? <clears throat> Man, the first races in VR, first of all, jumping from a single monitor, um, a single, you know, 30, I think mine's a 32-inch or 36-inch. It's a big monitor. Jeez, um, a single monitor like that and that into VR was huge. And that Rift sat in the box. Anna's dad bought it for me like a year before I actually pulled out of the box and used it. Um, I just didn't have a computer that could run it. Oh, um, okay. So, I mean, he, he sweet. Anna's dad's great. He does a lot of favors for us, and, you know, he's a really smart guy. Um, but he's like, this was on sale, and he just sends it to me. <laughs> so Jeez, I'm like, that's yeah. a really nice gift. I really appreciate it. Um, but I don't have a computer that can run it, so naturally that led to them, Anna, and them buying me a computer um, and, and helping me out there. But uh, the the jump from VR is, is stark. Um, it's incredible, the immersion that you get. Um, being able to look around the track and and see anything that you want to see. You know, I was watching Mark's race at Richmond and that trying to roll through or watching him run VRS at Laguna Seca and going into turn one where it's that double left-hander and seeing him basically make a left and not being able to look to the left and see the exit of the corner to, to draw his way out that's something that's just invaluable and I can't imagine road racing without it now. Um, it's really, really difficult. The field of view changes. The resolution is nowhere near as good, but honestly it goes away. You start, you stop being sensitive to it. Um, but for me, the biggest adjustment was the spatial awareness to the right side. I was hitting the wall on straightaways for weeks more than we normally do. You know, <laughs> normally we have, we'll tag it at least once a race, but that was really <laughs> tough to yeah. try and just get that spatial awareness down. And I think the first thing I ever streamed in VR um, was the short track championship before yep. this past one. That's right. And I remember it took you like a week and a half to get it set up. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was, it, again, I'm talking about streaming tips. Streaming, yeah. Trying to get it, trying to get it correct where it's like you're trying to get this rendering here and getting that rendering. And I had, yes. I had tried to take an easy way out and I was having my CPU using the HDMI out on the motherboard to my monitor mm. going to the BIOS and had it do that rather than just going to Best Buy and dropping the $18 on a display port cable, yeah. you know, and running it the way you're supposed to, which caused massive issues because the CPU was rendering an image for the monitor and also trying to render video 
for streaming and that was not working and it oh took me a goodness. week and a half to get that figured out that's one thing people don't realize either you need a, to be able to stream this stuff i mean you don't need a, a massive computer to run iRacing, racing but to stream it you got to have something good otherwise it's gonna look like junk so well the other thing is you have to understand you know what's enough and having mm-hmm. everything kind of optimized will, yeah. will help you out a ton like you don't need to stream at 4k yeah, no, nobody cares. You know, even streaming yeah. 1080, you got to remember what I'm looking at in the the Rift is only 720. Yeah. So it it why would I? It you're not gaining anything by that. So it's that exactly. and really just kind of playing around with those things makes a huge difference. But I would recommend VR to anybody. It has growing pains with it, but yeah. you know, overall, it's it's incredible. And last streaming tip. If you have to choose between 1080 or 720, 60 frames per second, most certainly go with the higher frame rate. It makes yeah. eye racing look so much better. So yes, absolutely. All right, and we had another. Qu- okay, Dale Jr. is yeah. should he go to the hall? Nay or nay? I think this is actually a very interesting question. Should Dale Jr. go to the hall? Yeah, I'm gonna say yes, he should. And it is, again, more of an impact thing rather than necessarily a results thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, yep. It's impact on the sport. I mean, the guy can't be most popular driver how many years in a row and not get in the Hall of Fame. He carried the sport for a decade. He t- exactly. And, yeah. and it may not be – I mean, think of Bill Elliott kind of in the same fashion where he was the most popular driver for – it was like 10 years. You know? <laughs> awesome, Bill. He, how many championships does he have? It, it just doesn't matter. It's just you have yeah. people that are synonymous with the sport and the things that they do um, and how much the fan base leans on them. And now he's going to be a broadcaster for God knows how long. You know, he'll he'll make it in the hall. No problem. You know, eventually, you know, but um, it's going to be based more on kind of civil merit than results, if you will. Yeah, yeah. it's it's the impact. I agree with Mark 100 percent. The yeah. talent certainly in some dimension i mean he definitely had some talent for sure yeah. but um it's going to be more impact for him and i agree with aaron and obviously he didn't get the results we all wanted him to get but no it's no, all i would, love to, watch. I would yeah. have loved to watch junior win a championship would have been great but did he ever even contend for one i don't um, remember yeah i think there was one year where i think he finished inside the top three or four but um yeah he was never really a a contender like he's gonna win the championship this year yeah well hmm yeah he he definitely and it's funny because aaron has been very stingy about who he said belongs in the hall but i would agree with him dale jr didn't you know finish well all Mm -hmm. the time but carried the sport for 10 years i didn't miss any other questions that were here did i um i think rylan posted one that valuable record that i own oh yeah most valuable record that you own this is this is, and I have one question for you, and then we'll shoot on over to Mr. Theodore's stream. But go ahead. What is your most valuable record? My most valuable record that I own, um, we own a couple that are kind of expensive. But I think I'll probably interpret that like what's the most money I've paid for a record. Because yeah. sometimes or being a record store owner, it's perks of the job. You know, you <laughs> get people that bring in records that are very valuable, and you buy a whole collection, and they happen to be within them, and you keep them. <laughs> but in terms of one, in terms of ones that like I've I've paid outright big money for, um, I mean, I, there was an album that I've listened to a lot way back when I was in school, and that was Keen. I don't know if anybody knows that band. Oh name yeah, so of Keen. And the, only we know that band. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the album is Hopes and Fears, um, and it's a fantastic record. Um, it was actually the record that I bought is kind of a gift to myself when we bought the record store. Um, but that album, they never actually sold it on vinyl. They pressed promotional copies that they gave away oh, to wow. press people and radio stations and whatever. Um, but none of them were actually sold. So you couldn't buy one. Um, so you have to get one from somebody who got one. And there's only, I think a thousand of them. Holy and cow. However, many How of them How did that are walk left. into your store? It didn't walk into the store. I had to pay a, a British guy, you know, because that's where they're from. They're from over there. But yeah. I paid a guy in the UK. I paid, I think it was $240 for it. 
um, for a piece of plastic. Yeah, that that plays music. That was a lot. But yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it's a lot, but you know, ultimately. It was a record that I really wanted, and uh, I shelled out the money for it. Yeah, I actually really like Keen. I don't remember what happened to them, but uh, I used to listen to their stuff. They are pretty good. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, that first album, I mean, well, it's not their I think it's their second album, technically, but yeah. it's the one that landed them, and it plays like greatest hits, you know, cool. for any of that stuff from in and around 2005 or so. But it's a great album. Love it. But like oh. I said, it's a very expensive record, and they've never repressed it, so... Um, sometimes you have records that are really valuable and then they'll relicense them and they'll reissue them and the value on them just crashes. Cause oh, now I'm you can buy it. Now you can buy a cheap copy. <laughs> well, let's hope they never <laughs> do that with yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping not, man. <laughs> but if they haven't redone it and you know, God, 14 years now, who knows? Yeah. Okay. Last question. This is my question. You know, it's funny because we talk, you and I talk about music all the time and you mm-hmm. sing on your stream all the time and you sing. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny great, by Ron, the way, if you, you need to yeah, tune well, in to Aaron's stream because he sings all the time. <laughs> well, I was laughing because I think it was, um, it was Rylan. He, I don't know if you noticed this, but he changed his avatar in, in uh, YouTube to Peter Cetera to bring I us luck. I did see that. It <laughs> <laughs> was really funny. <laughs> and you say that and Cetera wasn't lucky for us in um in the podium tour but uh we finished yeah. at the front at bristol and we won our first nis race so i'm going to say that PS- peter cetera is pretty lucky for us yeah now the you glory of love impression right? was was fun i like well, doing that so what is your favorite genre of music because you seem to like it all but what is your favorite yeah um i listen to literally anything um i've got records that span any genre like i love like alternative rock so like 90s stuff um i love jeff buckley soundgarden you know to like harder stuff like rage against the machine um you know into some of the even harder stuff like prodigy um and just on down the line you know you, a lot of 90s alternative though is really where i stick but Creed. classic 70s rock is we <laughs> create that butt rock era you know nickelback <laughs> you know but but yeah, I mean, I'll listen to anything, but I've got stuff like that. And then I have, um, I really love world music. So anything from like, um, like Egypt or Beirut or, or India or Lebanon, you I love, to. no, no, no. This would be like belly dancing kind of records and stuff. <laughs> um, so I love belly dancing records. I collect those. Face they're, reveal idea, they're by the awesome. way. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron belly dances. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> belly reveal. All right, guys. Nah. Hey, he's got to do taxes. His wife just informed me my dinner is ready, too. She is amazing. <laughs> I love Jessica. She can't, she's not having it, too. She's like, dinner's ready. You got five minutes. <laughs> like, you, got, oh, you have five minutes, Randy. Yeah, so we're going to let him go. Hey, we're going to raid John Theodore's stream. Uh, make sure you let him know, one, you're excited to watch him next week on the stream. Two, we always do a, a, an, like an obscure NASCAR driver's name. This time we're going to do Aaron Rodgers, though. And uh, So we're going to head in there, tell him you're happy to, you're happy to see him next week, and let him know. Aaron Rodgers. So here we go. We're going to raid Mr. Theodore and make sure everyone gets in there. And Aaron, I want to thank you for hanging out with us this week. I know we did you before, but there's so much cool stuff we didn't get to talk about, and I think we touched on it today. And I can't wait to have you on again in the future, my good man. Get your tag. Yeah, man. In. Yeah, we hit most of the highlights. Yeah. Good. St- oh, I. you know, mm. All right, next time, guys, we'll talk about his last podium finish and <laughs> bumping people. So we'll do that next time. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.